a very good morning to everyone at Cadre.org. With me is uh, another up-and-coming player. We've just had Fuser, um, and this is Xlord, a player who's uh, he's been a programmer since he was very young. I think it was 15 years old that you first started breaking into the Warcraft 3 scene. Um, you've kind of made it back into the StarCraft 2 scene now after a little, a little bit of a stint of absence. So um, we're going to ask you a little bit about how you feel you've progressed throughout um, both of the games. Um, now, a lot of people always say that a little bit of your, um, your progression uh, had to do with Take um, taking you under his wing kind of supporting you um, as you were a little bit younger into the Warcraft 3 scene and throughout the Starcraft 2 scene. Um, how, how did it feel having this support from a, a community hub like Take? And uh, how much of your progression throughout the two games uh, you have to thank to him? And how much is your own good? Um, it all started with uh, the age of 40, I think. And uh, I heard that Take opened some uh, newcomer team. So I sent him a, him a message to, uh, yeah, if I can join the team as well. Then he uh, took me and I made some test games. And I lost them all, I think. But uh, yeah, he did. I think he saw some potential in me. And um, yeah, after that, I could join the team. And uh, yeah, he was leading the way. And, yeah, he also said, don't flame anymore. I was a super flamey kitty, flaming everyone if I lose. So, yeah, from then on, I stopped flaming and uh, concentrated on gaming. Um, yeah, I improved and improved. Um, also, searched some uh, training partners for me. And, yeah, I think it's not all takes. Uh, yeah, no, it's not only takes good that you progress like this? Yeah, not only takes good, but uh, he also yeah, influenced the way I'm, uh, I took. All right, so um, in all honesty, Cadred.org was never really focused on Warcraft 3, but I do remember you quite distinctly from when you uh, participated in the IEM Sao Paulo um, event, which um, it was, I think it was one of the first times in StarCraft 2 that you really reaching out to the big audience, and y you played pretty well there. I don't think you came out of the group stages, but um, you faced some pretty tough competition and gave them a run for their money. Um, and I, I really thought you were going to break through. Uh, how did you experience I Am Sao Paulo, if, if you recall, because it's quite some time ago? And uh, what happened after that? Because you kind of went absent from the scene a little bit. You, you disappeared a little bit from, from the spotlight after you just took it. Yeah, at, uh, at that time, I was still making my A level. And uh, I didn't play too much before Sao Paulo either. So, yeah, I kind of expected to lose in the group stage already. And uh, I don't re really remember the players in there, but as you said, I think, yeah, Dimag and Muslim and some other player. And, uh, yeah, I didn't make out of the group, but, yeah, Sao Paulo was quite nice. Uh, a really nice city. And, uh, yeah, it really surprised me because uh, before the trip, I thought it's really kind of dangerous there, because there are so many murders and, st and stuff happening every day. Uh, but yeah, it's a really nice city, the food is awesome, the, especially the, the Brazil barbecue. It's really awesome, and yeah, I like the trip. All right. Um, sure. Yeah, and af after that, um, you said uh, I disappeared a little bit, because I was yeah, studying for my A-level in the end, and yeah, I finished in June, I think, or something. And then I started, yeah. Yeah, but one thing that's always been for certain is that you were a presence in the German scene. Um, the, the EPS has kind of been your home turf. I think you've won it a countless number of times by now. Um, you've been re doing really well in the Cups. But I think um, something happened in the last EPS that, that you didn't encounter before, which was you played your teammate in the finals. Now, we'll, we'll talk about your team a little bit later, but is it weird playing like for, I don't know, it, it must have been like 10,000 euros or something against your teammate? How, how does that feel? Um, well, we t actually, I only trained with Monchi because I had to play uh, soccer in the semi-final. So I trained a lot with Monchi, so we, know, we knew each other's strategy and how we play. So yeah, and after I won 3-2 two, two against soccer, we had to play then. And um, yeah, al al always in the custom games when we played, I always won the late game with 99% or something. 
and um, yeah, but he still is a really good immor immortal Orlin player. And yeah, I think he has one of the best immortal Orlins out there. So yeah, I probably, if I remember right, I only lost to this immortal Orlins. So yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. Uh, I tried some some gamble with slow links to run by in his main, and yeah, it failed quite a little bit, but. It also worked a little bit, but yeah, in the end he won, and I think he also deserved because without him, I I, th I don't think that I would have beaten Sokka. Um, l let's go back in time a little bit, back when you were a little bit absent. Uh, one of the big news that did break about you was that XMG picked you up, and uh, I I don't think XMG had picked up anyone at that point. I think they were totally new to um, not not to the scene, but as a team. Uh, was it a little bit surprising that they contacted you? How, how did this process go? And uh, how did it feel to be um, approached by such a prestigious sponsor? Um, yeah, the Chris Hesse, who is now the esports manager of XMG, was in uh, MYM with me before. Then he left the team and yeah, went to XMG. And I was yeah, about to leave MYM because I was not satisfied with the support. And uh, yeah, I wrote to Chris, hey, Maybe you can uh, tell, uh, speak to XMG to get me a sponsor, personal sponsorship or something. And we just, he just laughed and, ah, yeah, sure, and some, and some weeks later he wrote me, well, you, you, you wanted to uh, get a personal sponsorship? I don't think it's a, that stupid idea. So he talked to XMG and uh, I think they liked it, the idea. And yeah, so we came together. So what started off as a joke basically got you your job. Th that's a good one. Um, now, what happened afterwards? Because it was a personal sponsorship at first. And now Monchi has joined the team. And I think, I think what's surprising is the similarities between you and him. Because you both joined the team as you were breaking through, but as you were progressing very much. Uh, how, what is the relationship, so to speak, between the two of you? So the, you obviously, uh, I, I guess you must practice a lot. You're both um, German, uh, German native speakers, so that's, that's not a hard thing as well. Um, how does it feel to have him as a, a partner at XMG? Yeah, first of all, I didn't want any other player in my team or in the team because I want to stay alone there so they can, so XMG could uh, concentrate on me alone. Is that, is that a little bit of an ego thing? Yeah, I think so. But I didn't know him uh, before uh, that. And after he joined, and yeah, Chris had to decide it, I think. And he joined, and yeah, I was uh, surprised because he, I think he's the same personality as me. So we are a little bit crazy. So it's really fun to play with him, custom games, and to go to Dreamhack with him and to hang out with him. So yeah, we almost the same person. And yeah. Yeah. Right, so the, um, I guess the final bits of the question will be how have you enjoyed yourself at Home Story Cup so far? Uh, I, I guess like Baby Night, um, there's a lot of eyes on you right now. Uh, people are expecting a lot of you. Um, you, made, you made it through the first group quite comfortably. Um, you're playing in the third group today. Uh, how, how, how are you pleased with your play up until now? Uh, what are you expecting of the rest of the tournament? And what is your expected finish? Well, yeah, the first group stage was pretty okay. I 4 0 fly. What I didn't expect to be so, uh, yeah, to be a 4 0. And uh, yeah, the games against Marine King were pretty bad because I, I think I had too much respect because he's a Korean. And I don't play too, much, too often against Koreans. So, yeah. And now the next group stage, I have Stefano, Baby Knight, and MMA. So I have to play MMA first. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think MMA is for sure in favor, but uh, I will try my best. But it's still a tough group, so if, if I would be out in this group, um, I still would be not disappointed because all of the players have in my group have, have, are having a great results lately. So, yeah. All right. Um, all right, so your, the last question will be, what are your expectations as to who will win the tournament or who will be a top three or something like that? And um, where, where can your fans follow you? Uh, where can they maybe see you next in what tournaments? And obviously maybe shout out, shout out to sponsors and all that. Um, yeah, the tournament winner will be, I personally think it will be simple, maybe, but he just lost against Imang, I think. Um, so I don't really know. Maybe it's MMA. I didn't 
uh, watched too many games from him. Uh, but yeah, I think Marine King will not be the champion because he was struggling lately. Uh, it's really hard to say because they're yeah, not a really not a real favorite right now there. Um, a few months ago, I would say Stefano, but uh, yeah, but he's getting better again, so maybe Stefano again. And uh, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook. It's xxlord, so it's written i x i xlord, and then it's the same on Twitter. Uh, appreciate the interview, and I wish you the best of luck throughout the rest of the tournament. I think you can do really well. Um, and to all the viewers out there at cadre.org, um, this was only the second interview of the second of the t second day that we've been here. Uh, we'll get a lot more video interviews, a lot more content. So do stay tuned.